Welcome to Port Access, a step-by-step -step guide. Prior to beginning the procedure, please consider pain management measures, such as lidocaine creams called EMLA or LMX. Topical creams typically require 30 to 45 minutes of topical exposure to be effective. To successfully access an implanted port, you must first identify the location of the patient's venous access device. To do this, simply wash your hands and palpate the subcutaneous tissue to determine the borders of the access device. This allows you to palpate the center of the septum and gauge depth. Always assess the site for signs and symptoms of infection, such as erythema, induration, and pain. Based on your palpation and site assessment, you will select the appropriate length of a non-coring Huber needle. After assessing the site, collect all the supplies you need for the procedure, wash your hands again, and now you're ready. First, you'll prepare the supplies using sterile technique. You've opened the central venous catheter dressing kit, placed a mask on yourself and a mask on your patient, Remove the sterile gloves. And now you'll use the sterile drape to create a larger sterile field. You will open your caps using sterile technique and place into your sterile field. You will open your Huber needle or non-coring needle and place into your sterile field. You'll open a sterile saline pre-filled syringe and place into your sterile field. Now we are opening and placing a second pre-filled normal saline sterile syringe into our sterile field. Now it's time to don your sterile gloves using the sterile technique. Now we are ready to prepare the Huber needle. Using sterile technique, you'll remove your Huber needle from your sterile field, remove the cap, and attach your injection cap. Pick up your sterile normal saline syringe that comes pre-filled from pharmacy and attach to your Huber needle and flush off to the side away from your sterile field. There is a protection over the actual needle itself that keeps you from being stuck at this point. You can return the Huber needle to the sterile field as now you are ready to prepare the site. You can open your adhesive prep and set to the side on your sterile field. Open your antiseptic cleaning solution. Please note that she popped the sides by squeezing them together and shaking causing the antiseptic solution to flow into the softer part. Now she is scrubbing the skin for 30 seconds. Vigorous motion back and forth will help kill the germs. While the skin is wet, the germs are drunk. But in order for the germs to die, the skin must dry. You do not want to fan or blow on the skin at this time it needs to air dry for 30 seconds. Now you are ready to access the implanted venous device. To insert the needle, use the non-dominant hand to stabilize the borders of the venous access device and use the dominant hand to pick up the non-coring needle with the syringe attached. Aim the needle for the center point of the device between the fingers. With the dominant hand, firmly grasp the protective cap or wings of the non-coring needle and insert it firmly into the center of the port septum using a 90 degree angle perpendicular to the skin surface. Note that resistance will be felt as the needle reaches the base of the reservoir. 
Once you have successfully placed the needle into the access site, you will remove the protective cap from the wing needle if applicable. Stabilize the needle wings and apply the antimicrobial patch, ensuring it is right side up. Blue to the sky is an easy way to remember it. You will then protect the site by applying a transparent dressing. A skin prep is provided in your central venous catheter dressing kit. We do recommend that you use this prep to prepare the patient's skin for the strong adhesive that is in the clear dressing. Repetitive application of this adhesive can cause damage to the patient's skin and the skin prep is an excellent way to protect them from that. Now that the dressing is in place, it's time to confirm placement. You will slightly pull back on the syringe, aspirating for a brisk blood return to confirm patency. Clamp the extension tubing and remove the syringe to discard the blood. Do not flush into the catheter. Place needleless injection cap onto the extension tubing and use a turbulent flush method to flush the venous access device with 20 ml of normal saline. Observe the skin surrounding the non coring needle for leakage of fluid or infiltration to the access device. Last, it is important that you label the dressing with date, time of cannulation, needle gauge, length, and your initials, as well as document in Cerner. This concludes Port Access, a step-by-step -step guide.